Okay. Hey, everybody. Good morning or afternoon, depending on your time zone. We're excited to get started. Today, we got a good topic covered with Citrix um, and Choice Solutions. So I wanted to just mention one thing or two things. So first of all, some of you may have already been receiving your pizza kits in the mail. So um, feel free to, to tag us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, if you start making those over the next couple of weeks, so you could save it for a nice Christmas meal with your family. So those those are in the mail. Um, for those that haven't received them yet, should be at your doorstep within the next few business days. And then if for some reason with a week goes by and you don't get it, just send me an email. I'm Ellie, I'm the marketing manager. I'm the one that emails you um, frequently. And then the other thing, there will be a quick three question survey. It should take you about 30 seconds. Um, we would love your feedback. Just uh, quick information in, in that to help us improve these for 2023. This is our last webinar of the year. So again, thanks for those folks that have participated in, in our events throughout this year. We appreciate you and we'll continue this um, and hopefully continue to give you some cool stuff into the next year. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kick things over to Dana Feinlogi with Choice Solutions. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ellie, and uh, welcome, everybody. So I'm one of the partners here on the team and co-lead up the sales organization. Just behalf of, like Ellie said, on behalf of our team, um, appreciate your time. Very excited about the information, the hot topic, whether it be the pizzas you're going to be making at home, as well as the insights to today that we'll be sharing uh, just on Citrix Secure Private Access as a, as a consideration and something to learn about for your organization. So um, uh, obviously, you know, zero trust network access and, and the initiatives, you know, all the analysts, different things on uh, exploration of VPN alternatives uh, over the next year, just, just big hot topics. So, um, and taking the time to learn about what Citrix is doing uh, today is, is kind of our focus. So, um, you know, we've got a range of folks, professionals, uh, you know, joining us today from business leaders to cybersecurity specialists to, you know, VPs, directors, architects, and all between and, and a number of verticals across all over the country. So again, thank you. We're excited to have you all here. Uh, I think we all have maybe a, a common objective. And uh, one, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're working towards initiatives to, uh, you know, maximum increase the, the technology experience of your workforce. So in the, in the modern workplace, we, right, we got um, the, 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 you got to, you already have distributed users. Um, you might have this permanent hybrid workforce uh, that's that's starting to to develop within your business, and, and with that's kind of new challenges. But uh, again, you're just you're working to make sure they have the the right tools to have a, a unified experience, a high speed you know, experience wherever they're working from. But as a business, as an organization, you know, you have a major focus to continuously improve and protect the data and the you know the applications and the systems that uh, the workforce needs to be productive. Um, and, and all the while, kind of behind the scenes, you know, you guys are involved in different initiatives to transition maybe from legacy uh, infrastructure approaches and, and, you know, adopting SaaS applications, uh, transitioning parts of your infrastructure, all of your infrastructure, maybe into public cloud services, as well as consuming, you know, private cloud uh, solutions as well. And so you got, you got your legacy applications, you got SaaS applications, you got you know, just a, a large diversity of applications uh, in your, in your business and where that information's at, uh, as well as just a growing diversity uh, within your workforce and where they're working from and, and new challenges that, that work to you know, accomplish or to, to approach with zero trust security solutions. Uh, but our focus here as a team uh, for you as a partner to, to your organization, as a potential partner to your organization, is we want to help you uh, adopt a simpler, more secure IT environment from the data center or the cloud services that you're consuming uh, down to the secure endpoint. So that's that's our goal. That's our focus and a lot of the solutions uh, that we're working on towards you. Um, how do we do? What what kind of things can we do? I mean, we're uh, a reseller, traditional partner. So we've got a number of uh, very uh, uh, innovative technology solutions and a reputation for always looking for, for things that are bringing value and innovation for, for you as customers. Um, uh, to, to, to you as, a, as an option, but uh, greater than that is the, the services and the people that we have and the, and the technical team that we have. So um, for, for ideas like we might share today, uh, on the professional services side, you know, you might be trying to understand how this fits in with maybe traditional things you're doing with VDI or Citrix DAS or other end user computing solutions and how this fits in and what's that future strategy and approach. We've got an advisory workshop 
that we can come and do like a virtual virtual sessions and workshops with you and, and help you develop that blueprint, develop that plan uh, with with that what that modernized uh, workplace and, and workforce environment would look like uh, with confidence. And, and we've had the opportunity to do that for for some of you potentially on this call and and for uh, for many others as well. So uh, that's one area, but just build execution deployment. Um, but also, if you have a constrained staff on the operation side, we can we can fit a gap or we can you know, complement your team where appropriate from from the operation side. We've got a, a growing managed services operation and team uh, to be there to help you. So our, our engineering team, our technical team, uh, second to none, whether it be on how we can help you on projects and execution of new stuff, or if it's if it's uh, taking care of the day-to-day -day operations and upkeep potential partnership there. So some of the partnerships we have um, you know, in this space, you know, whether, you know, again, today we're going to talk about Citrix and I'll talk about that in just a little more in a second, but, you know, the infrastructure targets, whether that be the private cloud, um, or into Azure, Microsoft Azure, your infrastructure targets, things you might be using for secure endpoints, uh, what you might be using, leveraging automation wise within the environment, uh, tools you might be using for, you know, user experience monitoring, uh, whether it be for, for DAS or whether it be for your remote users, as well as kind of technologies that might be a part of you know, delivering very high performance applications for your business and your environment. Uh, specific to Citrix, we've we've had a long time partnership there. Um, one of the top partners in the country uh, with them. In fact, just here last year, uh, had the opportunity to be named Citrix part Cloud Partner of the Year. Um, with them, but uh, we've got uh, three Citrix technology professionals. They're part of our staff. Uh, a number of other engineering resources with a with a strong degree of experience and background. Um, again, and we're there just to whether it be whether you're new to adopting it, have an existing environment with challenges, to help you come in, learn about your environment, and help help you kind of develop, you know, fully succeed with that with that platform with that investment throughout the throughout the life cycle of that investment. So um, it, some of our team are also involved with the uh, local user groups and and leaderships, uh, different things like that. So a great team, um, you know, just uh, people that care. And, and when we have the opportunity to partner with you, uh, but that's a little bit of background on our company, our team. Um, and uh, so today I'm about to turn it over to to Ron Matchson, who's uh, a lead systems engineer within Citrix uh, to kind of share more on uh, the Citrix Secure Private Access, but also to joining us and kind of we kind of come back in after Ron's done is uh, our EUC practice leads, uh, Shane Kleiner and Scott Osborne, kind of help me with some real world examples where secure private access is being considered, as well as just as, as we go through content, just answering questions you might have uh, and, and to help you out. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ron. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you. Uh, thank you, Ron, for the insights. Thank you very much. Um, so what I want to do is bring up my slide deck here. And I'm not going to read the PowerPoint you to death, but I do have some, some demos uh, talking about uh, Zero Trust Network Agent. A little bit of information about me. I'm going on uh, 11 years now with Citrix. I have about 25 years of Citrix experience. And at one point in time, I did actually work for Choice Solutions. So I can actually vouch for what they do. Um, and uh, they're, they're a great bunch of people. They know their stuff. So with that being said, we're going to get right into Zero Trust Network Agent. Uh, this is actually one component of secure private access. And you can think of secure private access as securing from the inside out. So everybody knows Citrix uh, in the past used to be delivering applications and desktops, right? So with Citrix, we actually have what's called a secure digital perimeter around all of our applications, all of our SaaS-based applications. And uh, now, with everything going cloud, uh, we have to think more more in the aspect of just not the applications, not just the, the desktops, but we also have to find uh, a way of delivering those SaaS-based applications more securely without having to backhaul those through uh, like a VPN, um, securing access from inside out uh, or outside in with a VPN. And so instead of using a VPN where your credentials can be compromised and it's an all or nothing thing, uh, we have what's actually called the five W's. Who's trying to gain access? What are they trying to gain access to? When are they trying to get access to it? Where are they trying to get access to it from? And why are they trying to get access to it? So all of these policies come into play 
when um, your users are trying to access these resources. And mobile and workers are extremely mobile. I am a perfect example of a mobile worker. I RV full time. So I did have a sticks and bricks as the quote the RV community call it. Um, did live in Texas. I travel the country. I have um, uh, sort of like an SD WAN component for cellular service and I work out of an RV, although it's a big RV, and I use this product day in, day out. So I'm a perfect example. The other example that I have with me, uh, my wife is in the healthcare field. She works orthopedic, orthopedics OR, and she has to get access to uh, patient records, and she can do that from any device. And we can scan that endpoint to make sure the correct applications are being delivered to that endpoint and to that user. Um, and threats are rapidly evolving, as you know. So uh, people are being held hostage for their data. Uh, they, they're getting access into um, uh, uh, the, the networks from, from uh, hackers uh, getting into uh, the network. And there's hacker as a service now. You can sign up to get code to hack someone's network, just like any other cloud service. That's, that's crazy. So security products, we have secure private access and analytics for security. Now what secure private access is, it has a myriad of products in it. It has about four or five different products that are part of that, that suite. And then we also have analytics for security. And analytics for security actually monitors the, the session real time, what this user is doing. Maybe they're trying to access files um, from a remote device and if they do that, it will put that particular user in a high risk category. And it could trigger other events, such as notifying the administrator through email. It might notify the, uh, the user through email and ask that user, hey, is this you? You're trying to get access to this, yes or no? If they click no, then the system's locked out. Or it might trigger a remote, uh, uh, a shadow session and record that session. So analytics for security is real-time monitoring of what that user is particularly trying to, do, trying to do. It's proactive instead of being reactive. And all of these come into play to provide that secure digital perimeter that I was talking about around your applications, your SaaS-based applications, and of course your desktops. So what is zero trust? So in the old days, we had the, the old perimeter, traditional network, endpoints, onsite, users, server, and apps. And we would actually have to give control over the administrator and say, hey, Mr. Administrator, lock these users down. Don't let them have access to anything. Well, that was too restrictive. So what we had to do is we had to think of ways of providing access to the applications they need. I had a, a surgeon uh, one time at Brook Army Medical Center, and she said, hey, I need access to my stuff. I don't care how it works. I just need access to my stuff and I need it securely. And that's basically the gist of zero trust. And it is looking at who you are, what device you're accessing it from. Is it a trusted device? Is it a non-trusted device? If it's an untrusted device, you're gonna get a list of applications that might be different if it was a trusted device. And it might have policies that are invoked that might otherwise not be uh, set if it is trusted, such as uh, not allowing you to cut and paste or move outside of that particular application if it's a SaaS-based application. So we have all of these applications that are coming into play, personal devices, hybrid cloud scenarios where they're accessing workloads that are at their environment and workloads that are in Azure or AWS. So we don't really care what type of hypervisor it's on. We're kind of hypervisor agnostic. And then we have vendors and contractors always coming in. Uh, a lot of physicians are actually contractors to a particular hospital and they bring their own device. Now by bringing their own device, they are given a portal. And then if that uh, device has their certificate installed, let's say, or if they have the proper anti-malware software installed, it is then a trusted device. If it's not, it's untrusted. So we have all of these applications, all of these devices coming in, and we don't have to worry about 
uh, what type of access we have to give this individual based upon their, their type of um, uh, user access, their policies and their device. So how does ETNA work? There are actually two ways it works. One is an agent install, the other is agent less. So it identifies uh, the user would typically go to a portal, let's say, or they would have the agent installed and they would log in to that agent and that agent identifies the user, does an endpoint scan, looks for a certificate, looks for a specific criteria that you set up in policies, and then it identifies whether that's a trusted or an untrusted device. Is it the proper location? In other words, is this device inside the network? Is it outside the network? Does it have the proper IP address ranges on it? Uh, and then we deliver the apps and data to that particular user. <clears throat> so it's continually monitoring that particular user's access. It's evaluating the risk of that user. So for example, if I had uh, Bob logging on from a device that's always inside the network, and then for some strange reason, Bob logs onto a device that's outside of the network, it might put Bob into a high risk category and then trigger those events. And then we can centrally view and manage and enforce those policies and apply those policies through the authentication mechanism. So secure private access, like I mentioned before, has several different feature sets. It has zero trust network agent, agent less an agent, and we'll talk about that. We have adaptive access and security controls. So based upon who I am, based upon what device I'm accessing it from, based upon time of day. That is adaptive authentication. And I get a list of applications and uh, desktops based upon my authentication. I can browser isolate. So there are actually different types of browser isolation. I don't know if you know this already, but the uh, Workspace app uh, agent that you install, used to be called Citrix Receiver, it's called Workspace app now actually has a built-in browser. A lot of people don't know that, and it's Chromium-based. Uh, it used to be called the Armored Browser, which I kind of like better. Uh, it is now called the Enterprise Browser. So we can secure that application in that Enterprise Browser, and we can force that, that, that SaaS-based application or that, or that URL to open up within that uh, Enterprise Browser. Or if we need even more security, we can spin up an, in, an instance of uh, Chrome in a secure browser, and it's actually uh, a tab that opens up within their own browser, but it is an ICA session, and it's secured, and that browser is spun up at the instantiation of that application. And then, of course, we have single sign-on, which gives them the ability to sign on to their uh, SaaS-based applications without ever having to know um, the actual password and uh, username that it's using to get into that application. So if you have to, uh, uh, if an employee leaves the company and they were using Workday or if they were using um, Salesforce, they'll never know the actual passwords that were into those applications because it was delivered uh, securely through Citrix. And then we have monitoring of all those applications as well. And then of course I talked about the Workspace browser, the enterprise browser, which has popped up down below. So it's holistic and consolidated zero trust for multiple use cases. So secure private access. We have authentication and access policies based upon who you are. It's based upon your location, your device, what role you're playing, uh, what type of risk it's assessing based upon what you're trying to, to do at the time. And it's doing that through the workspace browser as well. And then your data center and your private applications are being delivered. So it's a one-stop shop for that. Uh, right now we're using Zoom, uh, but we integrate with Office 365 as well. We have accelerators for Zoom and Office 365. We have public cloud applications, which provide zero uh, uh, single sign-on capability. And then we have the secure browser service, which I mentioned before, which is an instantiation of uh, a session-based browser at the time you click the uh, URL or the SaaS-based application, and we'll see a demonstration of that. And along with that, we can actually watermark um, who that user is uh, with IP address, uh, with username on the screen. So if they even take a, a picture of it, uh, that watermark will, will be maintained. And then 
we're going to go into a, a demonstration of, of four of these aspects of secure private access. And uh, let me go ahead and start this one. This is actually a demonstration of a trusted device. And what we're going to see, we're going to see the authentication, and you'll actually see it say trusted device. And if it's an untrusted device, which we'll see in the next uh, demonstration, it will actually present them with two factors. And that two factor can be used with a Google Authenticator app or a Microsoft Authenticator app, and it will give them a barcode to scan. So it puts that into that authentication app and they will have to provide that security code. But I'll, I'll narrate this authentication. And Marissa was so nice to provide this demonstration to us, which is another employee of us. So what she's doing is she's going to her site that actually has uh, adaptive authentication. It's doing an endpoint scan and it's looking at this device and it's saying, hey device, do you have the proper file structure? Am I looking for a particular file set? And it has found that and you'll notice that it's saying it's a trusted device. It could also have a certificate installed. And by having these components at the endpoint and it's done its scan, these applications will be enumerated based upon a trusted device. And you'll see when she clicks the desktop, she's going to get pretty many desktops based upon this trusted device. So it's going to have two, two desktops. She'll launch a desktop. And in this desktop, she has the capability of launching all of the applications that she has. Or if it was an untrusted device, it might have a, a desktop that's limited in applications. And so, uh, the America's desktop is being launched here, and she has full functionality within this desktop, cut and paste functionality, um, and uh, the ability to browse all of the applications that she would have internally to the organization. And that's what she's demonstrating here. And in the next uh, part of the demonstration, we're going to see the list of applications that she has. And she'll click the applications. And these applications are enumerated based upon this trusted device. You'll notice that we have Salesforce and Salesforce Secure, which are two different ways it's being launched. She's launching Workday. Workday is actually launching in her own browser tab. So this, since this device is trusted, we'll let them launch Workday within their own browser tab. Facebook is being launched within their own browser tab. This is actually creating a secured uh, connection through secure browser. It is launching in a tab. However, this is that secure browser that is session based. And I can tell by the ICA icon at the top, top, although it's launching in her own browser tab. And I can really secure this type of connection um, because I have full control over that secure browser session. That concludes that particular uh, authentication. So for an untrusted device, it's going to do an endpoint scan. It will not find the particular file. It will not find the certificate. And her whole access will be changed based upon this untrusted device. So these two files are on her hard drive and what she's doing is she's renaming these files so the endpoint scan does not find them. And since it won't find them when it does its scan, you'll see in the dialog box, it will say untrusted, and it will also provide a two-factor authentication mechanism based upon this policy. And this is just one piece of a criteria that you can set. But that, she'll refresh the page, go back to the same portal. It will launch the endpoint scan, and this is being delivered by the secure uh, private access service. We'll say yes to the scan. If she said no, it's untrusted anyway. So here's the box. It's an untrusted device. And there's the passcode dialog box at the bottom for two-factor. If this were the first time, she'd be pre presented with a QR code. Once she logs in, you'll notice that the list of applications and the desktops have changed. So she'll present the desktops. 
it only is presented with the America's desktop. Now, because the America's desktop is presented, it, she has other policies that are invoked on this desktop. Uh, the other policies might be the inability to cut and paste out of this desktop. The other things too that could be invoked on this is the ability for workspace app to detect if she's sharing her screen and this would be all blacked out. But you'll notice on this screen, it's watermarked. So it's watermarked with her username, her IP address and the, the name of her uh, workstation. When she goes into her apps, these apps lists have changed. You'll notice Salesforce is not listed, only Salesforce secured and Workday secured. Now launching Workday secured will launch in a secure browser because I do not want this launching in her own browser tab. It will launch in a tab, but it's still a session-based browser. And it will still be watermarked based upon the properties of the policy. And you'll be able to see the watermark a little bit better in here because the screen is white. So pretty slick. She's also going to launch Facebook. Facebook has disabled all cut and paste functionality, although it opened up in a regular tab. And continuing on. So here's the difference between trusted device and untrusted device, which I pointed out in the demonstration. So we integrate with identity providers, third-party identity providers. We do use SAML 2.0. Uh, and here's a list of some of the identity uh, providers and we are always updating this list. So if you do have other identity providers, uh, when you sign up for the service, you'll get the gateway service. And basically you get net scalers uh, that are configurable from within the service. You also get the ability to download a cloud um, appliance. Uh, uh, um, and this is a, an appliance that you can install on a hypervisor instead of the standard Citrix Cloud appliance, which is installed on um, basically a Windows server. This is an appliance that works in conjunction with adaptive authentication. So uh, here we have a, listed, a list of updated applications that were provided based upon a trusted device and an untrusted device. So this is dynamically created based upon policy. So we, here we have an example of access to internal websites with Citrix Workspace app. And this is uh, a, the zero trust agent. And let's go ahead and kick this one off. So here, they're going to log in to the zero trust agent. This is agent less, it's a redirect. And this works with, works with DNS entries, with public and private DNS entries to redirect them to the cloud gateway. So she's going to launch an internal website with the Workspace app. Here again, we have our application and our desktop. And when she launches this application, this URL, it's actually going to launch in the enterprise browser. This is the browser that's built into Citrix Workspace app. And you'll notice it looks very similar to Chrome, but it is not Chrome. And they can actually put in their favorites tabs and so forth. But you can see that the browser looks slightly different but it is it does come with the uh, workspace app that you install it used to be called citrix receiver and i can control how they move around within this uh, browser with policy hey okay. So app protection, I really can't demonstrate this because you would actually see a black screen. Uh, we have a policy we can turn on app protection. 
So if I were in a Zoom call like I am now and I were to launch my published applications within Workspace app, I wouldn't be able to see them. It also keeps track of if there's a key logger trying to log my keystrokes, it prevents that type of functionality. It also, like I said, prevents screen capture. So it will not allow me to capture data out of one screen and, and then put that data into an injected SQL uh, um, URL, for example. And um, if you would like to see the, the uh, all of this functionality, uh, secure private access can be given to you as a demo. Uh, 30 day demo of extendable uh, up to 60 days along with um, uh, desktop as a service, which can also come along with that demo as well. So this is an agent access to an internal website and you'll notice that Marissa will then launch the zero trust network agent, which is installed on her laptop. Sure, she'll, she'll first try to go to the internal website which she cannot get access to. It's going to time out and give a, a site cannot be reached. And then she'll launch the zero trust network agent. And once she has established connection, uh, policies will allow her to access those particular resources on the back end based upon her access. And this also works as an untrusted or trusted device as well. So it's been established. Now she'll go back and try to uh, access the internal website, the internet site. And as you can tell, she, get she gets access to the internet site. Now, not only does she have access to the internet site, but she could also use other tools such as PuTTY. And she's going to demonstrate the use of the PuTTY tool getting access to a particular, maybe it's a, a NetScaler interface that uh, you have internally and you want to get access to that uh, um, NetScaler, maybe the console. And that's what she's demonstrating here. She's getting access to the console of the NetScaler. Now, with that being demonstrated, she's also going to get access to a SQL Server. And one of the ways she's doing this is through uh, the data tab through Excel. She's connecting to a SQL Server. Now, the SQL Server has its own permissions. We can prevent access to the SQL Server, but once she authenticates to the SQL Server, the SQL Server's permissions uh, are invoked. So whatever those SQL Server permissions are. But we can prevent access to the SQL Server. And there's the data, employee, fake employee data. So we have secure access agent, and then we have VPN unless connection like we just demonstrated. Once it's uh, invoked, uh, the policies are monitored based upon what type of access she has, what type of device, where she's accessing it from. So why secure private access? Protection for all of your apps, everything. Out of the box, BYO support, comprehensive security, global, better privacy and scale is built in. And uh, like I said, uh, a demo can pr be provided to you quite easily. And that concludes my, uh, my demonstration. Yeah, awesome, Ron. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, Shane. <laughs> oh no, go ahead. But yeah, uh, Oz and Shane, uh, thanks for thanks for hopping in with uh, with Ron. But so Shane Kleiner, Scott Osborne, they lead up the uh, the 
the EFC practice here on Choice Solutions. But thank you guys for hopping into and just maybe sharing some perspectives on, um, you know, what you guys see with secure private access and customer conversations and scenarios you've been a part of. And then uh, Ellie put it out there, but just a reminder, if you have questions, things that Ron went through, um, and and those guys are sharing. Please, please put those in the uh, the Q and A, and the team will get to those as as, uh, as we get to them. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, Dana. So appreciate it, Ron. Um, yeah, just to kick it off, I mean, most of you probably know Shane and myself uh, from some of the stuff we do. We get we get deep into the weeds on this this stuff, and I'll say I'm pretty passionate. I uh, have been from the beginning on secure private access in general. Uh, just for what it can do. As a matter of fact, Shane and I use it on the daily to get into our dev environment. Uh, just a very cool product. Uh, but we kind of wanted to touch on, I mean, Ron showed you know, a ton of different features, right? He talked through all the stuff in the demos. I mean, there's everything from adaptive access to adaptive you know, authentication to app protection, uh, secure, you know, secure browser service, secure browser, so, you know, there's the secure enterprise browser. There's a lot of stuff that goes into what you can do with SPA. Um, and, and don't confuse this with the previous product is, you know, SIA, we were doing stuff there, but SPA is just a fantastic product. And we've been digging in on our workshops with customers on some real world examples of what it can help them with. And that's kind of what we want to talk to uh, for a few minutes, you know, and then maybe, you know, get some questions going and, and answer whatever you guys might have. But uh, I'll just say, you know, a couple of things, you know, if you think about it, you have some customers moving, you know, cloud migration is a perfect example, right? Um, let's say, you, you know, we have customers that want to go all in on cloud gateways of service workspace, but they still use maybe Netscaler for full VPN or RDP proxy. If you were one of those customers using that, well, this is a perfect use case where we can offload those type of things from, uh, you know, you need still needing the Netscaler on-prem because those capabilities can now be folded into what SPA can do. So, you know, he briefly touched on it, but it has that ability to not only, you know, do standard apps that you would see within Citrus Workspace, uh, but the TCP and in in now coming, I don't think it's GA yet, but UDP based apps uh, that you can access similar to, if you're familiar with the old VPN client, the gateway client, which is now the secure access client. It, it has the same look and feel, but you can get to you know uh, those type of applications that way. Just a fantastic way to offload from your maybe your more expensive Citrix licenses, or you know, God forbid, forbid a double hop situation uh, where you might have to go to a desktop or app to get to just some SaaS app or you know RDP connection. That's a common one, right? So. Uh, Shane just has a few examples here of just what he was talking to today. Shane, you were mentioning one just to me a little bit ago. You just got off with a customer. I didn't know if you wanted to talk to that one a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, there's there's a lot of awesome use cases with with secure private access. And believe it or not, a lot a lot of folks out there might already own it. Uh, it's one of the cool yeah. things. If you're, if you're an old uh, Workspace Premium Plus customer, you kind of had it all, you know, mm -hmm. and, and some of that kind of got broken off uh, through some of the licensing announcements and whatnot. But you would uh, you would own uh, secure private access. If you go into your DAS portal, you'll you'll see a secure private yeah, access. That actually branded as what was it? Secure works workspace access or something. So it's yeah, it, used to be, it was like combination of components, right? It was access control was one component. They kind of took the best of all the technologies and kind of merged it together and created this solution. So one of the use cases in the in the customer we were talking to is basically you know looking to kind of have the you know use local applications, uh, you know, so they're local. Uh, you know, Office Suite, for instance, but get access access to some file services and some data services back in the data center. I didn't want to have to do kind of like you know publish internet or publish a traditional you know explorer with like client drive redirection or something like that to get access to those shares. That's a perfect example with a secure private access or the SPA client. Essentially, it's a, a small, very lightweight client goes on the endpoint. You can create these rules. Uh, these access rules, which would essentially allow exactly that, um, but but those rules you basically can can front end uh, basically, and that's where the kind of the zero trust piece comes in. It basically you can have you know GOIP filters, endpoint analysis filters as well. Uh, on top of that, um, user or group based, um, so all those uh, contextual policies essentially can be attached uh, to this specific use case, right? Versus you know, potentially in a, in a VPN, you're opening up everything. And here you can be, be very specific to that application or individual use case, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. In our case, like, for example, we're tied into 
Azure AD you might be using already, right? Ours is tied into Azure AD, so all that context, all that for MFA and conditional access is offloaded to Azure AD at that point when we get in initially. So, um, you know, it makes it makes a more native experience for for the end user too. Another perfect example is yeah. we've had one where you know maybe BCR or some offloading is just isn't working correctly. Um, we've had customers that they host uh, web servers internally and they they have uh, content that goes out all the time to thousands of employees and that just kills their Citrix environment the back end the hosts uh, this is a typical one on the big enterprise side well you know with with SPA we can then get to that we can publish that as an internal web-based app through the zero trust and get to it natively through SPA client and now we're not burning the you know, DAS license. We're not going through and hitting the hosted virtual desktop or app server. Uh, you know, and, and the hosts don't feel the you know, don't feel the pressure then at that point. So uh, there's all kinds of these type of use cases that are popping up that you know half the time we get into conversations with customers like boom, you know, some something said, and it's like, well, that'd be a perfect use case for for you know for SPA. Like we have our Prism Prism Central, you know, interface published or turbo stuff or rdps you know, like to yeah i think a lot of it too is like like traditionally folks have taken those intranet applications right and published those out through your through your browser and you have mm -hmm. all your lockdowns and things like that and that's using a traditional citrix license and you have to manage maintain you know, that browser infrastructure and whatnot in this case you're essentially so we didn't talk really architecture right but this basically what what from an architecture perspective what goes into your data center is similar to like you have a cloud connector, there's a hardened Linux-based connector appliance that essentially gets deployed in your data center. And that's what it, it sets up very quickly. You basically have an authentication URL, plugs into the cloud, outbound only connection, and essentially gives you that brokering back into your internet applications, right? So being, you know, TCP, as mentioned, UDP in the future, as well as your, you know, internet web applications. Um, so this, this essentially will give you exactly that. So instead of publishing that full browser, now you can publish out those web links. Those intranet web links that you have can be native and run either in a secure remote browser that's that's managed by Citrix, run in your local browser, or an enterprise browser. This is kind of the built-in enterprise browser. There's actually third-party solutions out there that create hardened enterprise browsers. This Citrix has an enterprise browser, Chromium-based. You know, it's on the latest, uh, uh, um, you know, Chromium, and it also has a supports. So one of the questions came in here actually. I saw it as we were talking. You know, can it support you know plugins and yes. Plugins? yes so it absolutely can so essentially you have a hardened browser and in that browser you can block things like cut copy paste you can watermark the session and things like that so you're getting complete control of of the environment um and it's a, and it's a native native chromium browser which is which is always nice as well so it's really just a fantastic uh solution um you know and, and because you if you think about it i mean our, our app estate has has changed over the years right it's a lot of it's becoming SaaS based, right? Um, and there's this mix. So Citrix obviously expanded well beyond just doing traditional apps. So everyone thinks that Citrix is just you know, delivering my native applications, right? In this case, you can handle you know, your SaaS applications as well as your, as well as your native applications, as well as you know. The, I think one of the, the really nice things we didn't really talk about is just the identity integration and Citrix being kind of an identity broker from a workspace standpoint, where you can have individual links that are you know, front-ended by different IDPs. You know, if you have a third-party app that has a, a link that's from a different IDP, yeah. you essentially can set that up and consolidate those under a single unified portal experience, which is really powerful. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, plenty of plenty of real-world examples, plenty of use cases. We use it personally, like I said, on, on the daily. It's, it's afforded me the ability to not have to jump to a Citrix session first to get it, you know, as a jump box type scenario. Uh, if you still use, you know, jump boxes or whatever, you know, without having any kind of full VPN at all, this is, this is a zero, no VPN situation, clientless VPN, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, it just, it works, man, it's solid. So, um, yeah, another, another sweet tool and toolbox for us uh, from the Citrix side, we, we've been touting it every time we can, um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're, you know, if you have any other questions, you know, let's post them in the chat. Um, you know, love to get it and get into you, you know, individually more. You just start, start thinking about those type of use cases that, 
maybe, hey, I don't want to do this with my current you know, DAS or CVAD situation. Of course, this is a cloud service only. So you would have to be moving from CVAD to DAS for this to be applicable. SPA is cloud service only. So, um, yep. And uh, yeah, so that's all I got really. Uh, so now if there's any other questions from my standpoint, I don't know, Shane, did you yeah. have any other, like some, some of the hot examples that you know, we were kind of throwing around before this, but if we- Yeah, I mean, I think the, big, the biggest ones that we've been kind of getting is just basically not having to, you know, manage those individual, you know, remote connections essentially, or, or folks that, you know, um, traditionally would need a full VPN for maybe accessing, like you said, RDP, if they need access, you know, access, like the SQL management console, you know, things like that. Essentially, those are all things that, uh, that you'd have to have, you know, a full VPN or you'd have to have a VPN that's kind of firewall yeah. off those specific components. And that's then managed by a different team where really, you know, the network team typically would manage that, right? Or in this case, you really, we're, we're you know, Citrix is application delivery, right? It's an application delivery fabric. This now allows you to attach those policies to those applications. So you're giving them the same benefit and and uh, you don't have to deal with the network team. Just kidding. There might be some network folks on the call there. And, and, and there's great network folks out there. I'm not saying there's bad network folks. They're saying in general, like when you have to go to different teams, right? I mean, and we love the security folks too. Uh, you know, but when you go to different teams, there's always you know, different dynamics and things like that. So it is nice when you're able to kind of manage it as a single cohesive solution. And this is enables that, right? Uh, which is really cool. Yeah. Another thing, yeah, that I just thought of like if you've ever tried to do clientless access through through the NetScale, it's painful right it was it was only supported for like sharepoint and those kind of things well now you can get away you don't have to do any of that i won't ever talk about that stuff again but, you know if i have spa to my, at my disposal for things like the clientless access capability of, of the netscaler and the gateway just really wasn't made for that very painful um this is a purpose-built solution for for doing that type of uh, thing so yeah um, yeah. uh, so on, oh, chat is disabled. Uh, to, uh, Todd had mentioned um, he's got his hand raised. I don't know if you had a question specifically. I think he's trying to ask a question. It says it's disabled. Um, we can see your questions in the Q and A if you type it there. The Q and A, yeah, not the chat. Q and A. Um, I had a question. You know, someone is specifically asking around, like you know, we talked about adaptive authentication. You know, is that a specific service? Um, so, I mean, we can cover that real quick, but yeah, because this essentially adaptive authentication basically was uh, another cloud service that Citrix created, right? So taking kind of the best features and functionality of the NetScaler, and we could say that NetScaler is back. How awesome is that, right? Hey, Oz, why don't you uh, rip open your, your shirt real quick? Show us what that says right there. Whoa, NetScaler rocks, huh? Although, although this week, it's a little bit... <laughs> A little bit sketchy this week. We've had a couple CVEs come out. Uh, yeah, some CVEs, but everyone's got those. To, you know, keep it zipped. Or... Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, Siri says she doesn't understand. She popped on my watch. That's happening a lot more lately. I'm getting a little nervous that this thing's listening to everything. Um, but anyways, um, but yeah, on the adaptive authentication piece, that's really so they basically took kind of the best pieces of the NetScale from kind of end factor, you know, step up authentication, right? Those components. Um, of the of the NetScaler engine are basically now a cloud service, right? So you basically would be able to, it would automatically deploy hardened uh, ADCs in, in your tenant and uh, and basically provide you with the ability to, you'll be able to log into those and configure those today, configure those uh, advanced authentication scenarios as a cloud service uh, versus actually having to ma manage, monitor, maintain individual NetScalers. So it's a, it's a neat feature uh, uh, and functionality that's actually, uh, built and now as part of the cloud service, which which this uh, does leverage um, for device posture checks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, security analytics. Yes, it can export uh, to others. It's specific ones. I just can't remember which which ones are on that list. Um, yeah. So, so it can. Yeah, there's a whole slew of stuff I, uh, mm -hmm. it will integrate with. Um, and basically, I, I think it's actually, uh, I have to go look it up, uh, to be honest, but I, I believe now it can pretty much uh, link up to anything. Uh, you know, it's kind of open yeah. from that mm -hmm. perspective now. So it's definitely, because Citrix has kind of taken, a, you know, a, a newer approach kind of going forward, really, and with some of the redesign and things going on, where it's really, really going to be very ecosystem friendly and focused, right? So instead of 
you know, keeping all the data in the security analytics platform saying, hey, I got all these great insights from Citrix. Let me send it to your SIM, right? And, that, and that's the things that you're going to be, you know, start seeing, uh, you know, uh, from Citrix for sure. Um, another question came in around adaptive authentication. You know, how does that compare to the conditional access policies provided by Azure AD? And that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's uh, Azure AD provides more uh, details and insight as far as like device device integration, right? As far as like, you know, Azure AD, you know, hybrid join um, has more uh, more details around like the uh, identity protection and kind of the needed features and functionalities that are built into Azure AD uh, from the risk protections and things like that. Um, whereas on this side right now, from a conditional access perspective, the engine basically today, if, you know, it, it in the future, there's conversations about just leveraging those those data points coming from Azure AD or your other identity providers, right? Um, but right now, Citrix Native will do you know GeoIP, basically geolocation, uh, device posture check. So that's basically leveraging the the ADC or the NetScaler. It's going to say ADC for a while, but uh, but NetScaler for that advanced checks. You know, um, you can check for specific native clients. Um, you know, basically you can check for anything on the endpoint side. Um, uh, you'll be able to do there uh, on the, um, and then user and group. So there's a little bit more on the Azure AD side, but I guess, I guess it's, I, I would say it's a little bit different, right? Cause you got, you got the advanced device check functionality that you can't do on the Azure AD side, so. Right, so it has the endpoint, uh, the endpoint check, the EPA client, if you're familiar with that, depending on what you're doing, right? There's some things you can do like user-based cert, which you don't need it, but other things mm -hmm. you get more involved where you do need that, which you showed during the demo. And, and the important point there is that Shane was talking about on the, on the adaptive loss side, the Citrix in general on this can't leverage yet those conditional access of what, like the Azure AD piece, what it figures out. It, it can't leverage that to make decisions for adaptive access, right? So hiding or showing applications like he showed based on this or that, it can't leverage the Azure AD side of things for that yet. Um, uh, so yeah, the, the adaptive off is Citrix's own Basically, if you think about it, just net scalers in the cloud, right? That they manage, they provision, they license, uh, that kind of thing, right? So it's it's net scaler specifically, the whole n factor flow, all of that in the cloud that you can then go through and configure the rules a lot more, you know, a lot easier than you know doing n factor. Shane knows all about that from the last couple of weeks. So, <laughs> yep. Uh, and then so physical access key, cert based auth, that would be more if you were doing like uh, Azure AD, of course, Azure auth, uh, integrated auth and, and pushing it off to Azure AD again. So we, we get into the SBA client, like I was saying, we, we get offloaded to Azure AD, right? So everything afforded to you from an Azure AD perspective, which obviously physical keys, uh, UB keys, those kind of things, cert based auth. The NetScaler side of things for adaptive auth. Um, haven't tried anything with YubiKey for that, but it does do cert based off in general. So I think it probably would work. I'm just not sure. Um, we've been early on beta testers for adaptive off in the beginning before it's before it could route traffic through cloud connectors. And now they've made that much easier for that flow will go through cloud connectors. Thank you. There's a question. I, I'm seeing some folks raise hands. I don't know if they have like Joshua uh, M. Jacobs uh, has, a, has a question. If we can just Maybe it's easier to unmute, or, or I don't know, or uh, or we can uh, if we can ask it in the Q and A piece. But yeah, I think yeah. I can. Uh, I okay, he can talk. He can, Joshua. You can unmute yourself. If you had a, if you had a specific question, if not, no. All right, Josh, come on up. Oh, hey, Shane, Shane, I, I know you love pizza, so I just want to throw that in there. Yeah, <laughs> I do a pizza. I did not have a pizza deliver. I've been waiting for the door to, to get knocked down with a pizza delivery, but apparently I did not make the cut. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. He had his hand raised, but maybe uh, maybe uh, clicked it by mistake or something when he was talking. But, yeah, I mean, feel free to jump in if you have a have a question there, Josh, or if I anyone has a few minutes left. So, yeah, if, if you can, I don't know. I'm only seeing the Q&A, the ones we... Yeah, I don't see anything else there. Oh, he just he hit it on accident. Uh, here is another question coming at you. Okay. Uh, with 
Oh, Any mind. preparation instructions for the pizza <laughs> ingredients? Well, that would be I'm going to flip that over to Shane because he loves pizza. So that, well, that, well, actually, wait, did you get a we got a BYO do it yourself pizza situation? So everyone got like dough and stuff. Like, how'd this all play out, or was it like a delivery from your local pizza joint? No, let's do it. Yeah, yourself. it was a pizza kit. Yes, I'll. That's... Someone else asked that, uh, Todd. So I'll make sure to get instructions over. Yeah, we got to make sure uh, to send one over someone. to my my location here at Do It Yourself Pizza Kit. What? Okay. We'll have to talk about that I think that's, that's all the questions that I see. Um, Shane and Oz, I didn't know if you wanted to kind of wrap up with the last couple of minutes that we had. No, I just say that, we, you know, we it was mentioned that we do the EUC advisory stuff. We've been doing a ton of advisory. You know, this is just another feature, another tool in the toolbox of fantastic Citrix entitlements that a lot of the stuff from the customer side you may already have. And so, you know, give us a holler and we can talk through it a little bit more one on one. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. No. Th thank you, guys. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Um, yeah. We'll be uh, we'll be around. Happy to uh, happy to talk more through this. And and it's definitely uh, definitely an exciting technology. And and we're, we're just kind of scratched the surface. So. Yep. Yeah. Uh, again, appreciate it. Uh, there's a brief survey as you guys close this out. That'll that'll come up. Three quick questions. We would greatly value your input. Um, anytime we're putting together something to, to take, maybe uh, share insights and and gain your time, just always value making sure that uh, it's something that topics are relevant, content, everything. So uh, I want to say thank you to Ron from Citrix for joining us. It's great to great to see you again. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and uh, enjoy the holiday season um, and uh, enjoy the pizzas. We look forward to that. Like Ellie said, if you got it got any great creations we'd love to see them on social media so uh, thanks everybody all right thank you take care i'm gonna go